but you straddle two cultures. One is in the white world, where we made storytelling, well, we say, yeah, we say your theater students uh, acting is sacred and profane. We live in a commercial storytelling world where the streaming giants will pour money at stories because they make more money when more people watch, no matter what they're doing. So there's a commercial element to cranking out stories in the indus commercial industry here. We all know that world, and we've read those scripts where you just want to throw them away because they're not actually about anything except making somebody some money. Hmm. Then there's the other world in which the storytelling is sacred or is the way the culture expresses itself or is actually the as Thomas King's, there is nothing but story, therefore you better be telling entertaining and fantastic stories. But y you work in the States, you live in both worlds. That's a huge commercial engine in which there's lots of interesting things also happening. But the immensity of that commerce producing the story world just leaves me breathless. I mean, Andrew's been in them. I've seen him, right? We've all been in these TV movies that come up here and we read the script and go, really? Fine, okay, I gotta feed my kids. It's where we put the tradition of telling stories in us, either in the sacred part of us or in the profane, it's a paycheck part of us. How do you deal with that? Um, I'm a virus in the system. Oh. You set up this, this bi binaristic view of, of, of the stories. Uh, I think there's, there's, there's more plethora there. There's, like, there's more of it. But unless it's coming from us, it's all problematic in some way. So I'm a virus. My work, my work as an indigenous person, I'm a virus. I will, I will, I will replicate myself into the, into the matrix or whatever you want to call it, and I do my work. And I insert my stories, and I subvert. I gum up the machine. I'm a fly in the ointment. And I view all, all work, whether it's beautiful and special. I remember uh, uh, Nikki Cara was making this new movie, Power of the Dog. And they said, uh, we'd like you to audition for this. This is, this is a great filmmaker, Benedict Cumberbatch. He might win the Oscar for his role. High power, beautiful, beautiful story, you know. And they sent me the part, and it was like this native guy, and I was like, what, what, what's this native guy doing in this story? It's like, this is bullshit. Like, this particular role and how it like, looks, and like, I don't want to tell, I don't care who's telling this story, but such a dead-end role, such a dead-end idea for this character, and I don't want to contribute my name to that story. So even when it's got prestige, it's still part of it. A, an alien storytelling apparatus that dominates the entire financial and 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 uh, um, you know corporate structure of the stories in Canada and the United States and Australia wherever and I realize that I'm still I have no power except for the power to be inside these stories and, and broadcast my signal from inside. And hopefully it'll disrupt just enough to be truthful to the kind of things I want to do and the things I want to say. And do you never get depressed at the chances of your virus actually making affecting some oh, I'm, I'm so privileged to be the virus <laughs> I'm, I'm so delighted there's plenty of people who would love to be in these shows and are not I'm in them I have access I have an obligation to to, to disrupt in, a, in any way I can and so I look at that I'm like oh, how privileged 
that I, I, I can be uh, the ointment fly in the ointment.